Hello everyone and welcome to a very relaxed Saturday evening episode of Ted's Boo Cellar with me, Ted. Now I'm feeling a little bit worse for weather because I really didn't get a lot of sleep over the last couple of days. Uh, thankfully my next shift tomorrow is at like 4 in the evening so hopefully I should get some time to get a good bit of rest and uh, well 4 in the afternoon I should say so hopefully I'll get a good bit of time to get some rest maybe even have a quick go in the gym who knows we'll wait and see but anyway um, I thought I had done a review on tonight's beer before at some point in the past but I have not and it is definitely one that warrants a try or warrants a review because it's one that I feel combines some of the best aspects of quite a few different beers that I really enjoy and that I know quite a lot of people out there who may watch me enjoy. And the beer in question today is Birra Moretti. Now, with a few of the beers I've done recently, I couldn't exactly remember if we uh, had previously stocked them at the USSU bars, but we do stock Birra Moretti in bottles. We unfortunately don't do it in draft, so I believe that's the best way to have it. But these little mini cans, like, these little coke sized cans are pretty sort of like solid way to have it like these are like really really nice cans 4.6% so it's not as strong as Stella or Cronenborg it's like about the same sort of strength as like an Estrella Dan so it's a good strength it's not too powerful it's not too weak either it's you know it's a, it's a good level sort of strength beer and uh, yeah because it's in these cans there's not too much beer in one go um you can get like those big giant sort of like a uh, pint sized glass bottles though and those are pretty nice but uh yeah if you want just one quick little drink this is a pretty good bet but anyway bottoms up um So, weirdly enough, I think the sort of like the similarities I get initially is I immediately recognise a bit of a similarity to like the fizziness and sort of like Eurocentric sort of like pizzazz and fizz and sort of like broad taste that like say you'd see in something like uh, probably Stereotois. Um it's got a weird little bit of like maltiness that you might find in something like Estrella or, um, or possibly San Miguel. Although it's 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 maltiness. This maltiness is probably around the same level as like something say like an Estrella Dam, but maybe just slightly less. And definitely isn't as strong as the maltiness in a uh, San Miguel. Um, and then I do notice a bit of a similarity to Peroni. It has that sort of like. Italian lager sort of smoothness, that Italian lager sort of like elegance to it that you um, that you find in something like Peroni. So it's a good mix of like some of the best aspects of um, of a uh, of a nice sort of like Eurocentric beer. And while it isn't necessarily my absolute favourite, it's damn close. Yeah, I would say, like, I'd probably just about prefer this bit more than Peroni. And that is considering the fact that Peroni is a damn, damn nice beer. But, yeah, no, I really, really like this. Really nice can. Um, slightly cheaper than Peroni as well uh, in most places. And, yeah, it's a really good balance of different flavours that I feel has got a good amount of influence from other sort of beers. And, yeah, it... The tagline of it, of the Italian passion for brewing the Italian... Oh, that is just the... That is just the tagline. The Italian passion for brewing. I mean, it's basically is the passion for Italian brewing and that sort of, like, Italian love of food and drink encompassed in a nice little beige can. So, yeah, no, definitely well recommended. Absolutely a buy. Um... Don't know if I'd say it's as high as a Stella, but it's it's fairly close. Um, I mean, it's probably just slightly higher than a Peroni, 
Um, and that's considering that Peroni is a bloody good beer. I'm going to give it a fairly high rating, but it's not going to be massively high. I'm going to say... I'm going to say 8.15 out of 10. And it thoroughly earns that. And quite comfortably so. This is a very, very nice beer. Very um, palatable. While also containing some more sort of diverse aspects of other Eurocentric beers that I feel like a lot of people uh, have quite an interest in. Um... Uh, might be good enough to get as the standard session drink while you're getting drunk. Um, but I think it's probably best as either having a couple with your mates to relax, having with a meal, and as sort of like a decompression and relaxation drink. So with those three categories, that's probably where it most appropriately fits into. However... It still would be decent as either a session and getting drunk drink or a pre-drinks drink. But it's just that the other three it is more applicable to, I feel, based on its flavour and its style. However, it could just as easily fit into all five categories. Probably just the three I just mentioned, probably just slightly easier. Um, but yeah, overall, decent 8.15 out of 10 overall. Um, very much a buy. Definitely well recommended. Don't know if I could say... If absolutely everyone but i definitely say for most people who are interested in drinking beer and uh yeah really really nice lager definitely definitely something that uh the people of italy should be proud of um so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like share and subscribe if you have any interest in checking out any of my other online activity be sure to check out my social medias youtube channels and uh twitch channels in the video description below as well um, if you have any suggestions for any future videos, be them reviews of food, drink, alcohol, or anything else, or any other kinds of videos, again, leave them in the comments section below, like always. And yeah, until next time, stay safe, drink responsibly, know your limits, and above all else, I'll see you guys next time at the bar on Ted's Booze Cellar. Take care. Turn, turn off, you absolute sod.